This is the story of the rising of the floating dock Mediterraneo, carried out at Legon, Italy, in September 2016. Durania, a research vessel of 1100 grass ton, was one of the weak block in the floating dock Mediterraneo. 188 meter long, 42 meter wide, and with a lifting capacity of 18,500 tons. The weather was calm and there was no warning that it might anticipate the incident, which suddenly occurred in the late afternoon, when the hull abruptly tilted on port side, fell from the keel block and collapsed on the floor. In the effort of making the basin accessible to the research launches, which immediately came to evacuate the people on board of the listed vessel, the dock was ballasted against the left lying on the muddy seabed. Unfortunately, unexpected water ingress caused the pump room of the dock to float, the day after the situation was puzzling. The urania was completely floated listed to port side and her main deck was about a meter below the sea level. The dock floor was at a depth of about 8 meters below the sea level. The water visibility was usually very poor, never more than a few dozen of centimeters. A routine operation was now the scenario of a major casualty which had to be approached accordingly. I began my career in a relatively small uh, shipyard in Italy and the most part of our job was in repairing and uh, conversions. And uh, one of the most fascinating uh, projects was the refitting of a ferry or better a cruise vessel which had sunk in the Baltic. It was salvaged and then towed to Italy for, to be refurbished and it was a really fascinating job. After a few months of difficult job, uh, we had the proudness of uh, re-delivering the vessel in, uh, in the Caribbean area. We delivered it in Miami and it was really a nice moment in which, in which we saw the, the new vessel sailing again for uh, her new business. When I was approached by the owners and, and managers of the uh, disabled dock to prepare a feasibility study, I was aware of the challenges which were behind uh, that project. Uh, the, the asset was an important one. And just a feasibility study showed that it was necessary having to do with uh, different stakeholders. I knew, however, which were the tools to be used because uh, it, they were not new to me. So I was really conscious of the possibilities. The incident has caused dramatic consequences to a number of persons. Uh, a major asset in an important port was uh, out of service. And uh, a first class ship here had uh, its main uh, uh, launching and hauling facilities completely out of order. The various stakeholders, including the port authorities, uh, all the public prosecutor, and uh, every, every stakeholder in, involved in the matter was very, very careful in not allowing any type of uh, intervention which was not uh, carefully designed since the beginning. The key point was that nothing was to be left to the case. Everything had to be designed at a, at a very early stage. The divers of the fire brigade had first to survive the area using a ROV, but their intervention was targeted mainly to exclude the possibility of an immediate worsening of the situation. The first aim was uh, obtaining uh, the, the trust of the authorities. So I put in contact uh, the specialist divers of, the, of Carabinieri with the consultant to the public prosecutor. And uh, they made the first, uh, actually the first uh, diving survey in the area. However, unfortunately, this was not uh, fully satisfactory from a technical point of view, because although they, the intervention was very uh, careful, uh, we, it did not uh, reach uh, the, the, the level of information that was necessary to, to prepare any type of design. It was therefore necessary following a different approach. The conventional diving inspections, the conventional surveys, apparently were not uh, sufficient in that case. And they even used the ROV uh, 
remote operated vehicles. But these were revealed to be uh, not up to the scope due to the really poor visibility in the area. Having understood that the conventional procedures such as diving surveys and inspections by means of ROVs were useless, the next step was to appoint Drafin Sub Survey, a company specialized in hydrographic surveys and marine positioning services. A small and efficient team uh, reached Leghorn and uh, the, the superstructure of the vessel were, were laser scanned, um, whilst at the same time, by a multi beam, uh, we tried to obtain uh, a pattern of the debris in, in the under the water by using a, a sonar. Uh, the results were not fully satisfactory, but uh, however they gave uh, uh, some results which were quite important for the following project. The side scan sonar was important to try to find the position which the blocks coming from the original uh, dry docking plan were in the moment. Uh, it was necessary knowing where they were because uh, uh, it was not possible having a, a diving survey, both because, because the air was under seizure and because the visibility was very poor. Moreover, uh, it was not clear if the vessel was stable in such a position. So uh, having repeated diving survey with divers uh, underneath a hull, which uh, was not uh, uh, stable 100% in that position, uh, might have been dangerous. So uh, we followed different, uh, a different approach. Uh, and that's why uh, we were really in favor of uh, uh, remote scanning, uh, both with, with laser and, and sonar, without involving any person in directly close to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the object. The extent of damage to the dock was unknown and no details assessment was possible. The visibility was poor, it was unclear whether the vessel was stable in her inclined position. The tail diving surveys would have asked weeks and the results would have been uncertain. I witnessed the laser scanning and uh, when I understood where exactly the vessel was within the dock, I presumed that some of the compartments had not been touched by the falling vessel. So I made a very rough uh, calculation, uh, just to understand if it was possible raising the dock without using the compartments which were likely damaged by the, by the collision. However, these first assumptions have to be confirmed by a more scientific tool. Therefore, I contacted uh, my colleagues of Herbert Engineering that I know since uh, some years ago, let me say five, six years ago which developed a specific software tool uh, for salvage cases, such as this one. Herbert Engineering is a consulting company headquartered in Alameda, with offices in Annapolis, Glasgow, Shanghai and Singapore. One of the services provided is a salvage response by using the software HackSolve, developed on purpose in-house. I had spent a few days in Glasgow together with Luca Letizia, their European manager, and I was conscious that they had the perfect tool and people to support me. And meanwhile, Herbert team in Shanghai, under the supervision of their chairman Rob Tag, prepared the model of the floating dock, including all the ballast compartments. Rob did some uh, simulations and this proved that my first assumptions were correct. It was uh, possible raising again the, the dock by using only the compartments which most likely had not been touched by the falling vessel. Uh, however, the problem in this moment was that uh, we were aware that the pump rooms were completely flooded, all the systems of the dock were out of service, so some, a different system has to be found to deballast the, the compartments. Uh, I thought therefore to use uh, some deep well pumps to be lowered into the double bottoms through openings to be created by divers on the dock floor. At this point, the progress of the project took just halfway. A further obligation was given. The vessel was to be stabilized in the dock in order to be sure that no movement was allowed during the refloating operations. 
Construction divers are used to utilize wedges, pillars, even sandbags, everything they can invent with their ingenuity to stabilize a floated or sunk vessel. However, this case was pretty different because anything has to be designed, everything had to be proved and scientifically calculated. It was necessary finding a way of demonstrating to the various stakeholders that our system was reliable and safe. Apart from safety of the project, another important issue was uh, uh, minimizing the impact on uh, the investigation, on the forthcoming investigations. It was necessary preserving as much as possible the status of the, of the floor dock and avoiding any unnecessary removal of the object. We used the, the results of the laser scanning that we did a few weeks before and uh, by overlaying uh, the cloud of points coming from the laser uh, to the drawings uh, of the to the actual drawings of the of the vessel we created a 3d model which was uh, layered into the dry dock and it was therefore possible uh, understanding which were the interferences and the exact position of the of the vessel as it was in in that moment having done some sonar surveying we knew at a certain extent, which was the position of the interfering object. So it was possible finding some sections where uh, placing uh, the stabilizing devices, which were to be designed. Uh, these sections were very limited in number, because in a few places we had uh, uh, the same characteristics of uh, strength and availability of space. Dynamic simulation was run, and it was understood that it was uh, uh, necessarily putting some uh, stabilizing blocks on starboard side, whilst on the port side uh, uh, rods were necessary. Uh, the vessel had the tendency to uh, move on her starboard side. Uh, all these stabilizing devices were uh, designed by using FEA. There was no uh, rule to be followed. We had to, to use a dire designing approach. Uh, so everything was uh, uh, calculated by using uh, uh, the software which is available at the moment. June 2016. The project is complete, has been submitted to Registro Italiano Navale for crossing checking and then presented to the consultation of all the stakeholders to inform them about the decision taken. In the matter of a few hours, all the participants are convinced and the green light is given. A temporary working site was created aside the Florida dock, including containers for offices and meeting rooms, a small workshop and store. Wheeled cranes were moved, services rerouted to provide compressed air, electricity and technical gases. Specific measures were adopted to allow the safe participation of surveys appointed by different parties. However, avoiding any possibly dangerous interface with the operation. We established very, very strict safety rules and it was our firm intention to apply them in a very strict way. Nobody has to be injured in any way during the operations and there was no incident whatsoever was to be accepted. In the meanwhile, and without any further intermediate passage, the 3D models of the stabilizing device were converted into manufacturing information and steel cutting schemes. In four weeks, about 25 tons of steel structures were cut, welded and prefabricated, each of them in the shape of dimension imagined on the computer monitors only. The pipes intended to accommodate the pumps into the double bottoms were delivered and the pumps provided. The actors asked to put the entire staff in the exact position were now called on the scene. Drafinsub was created in 1976 by Adriano Passeri, my father, and now president of the company. His first approach with the sea has been in the Boy Scout. He created the C section because there were no one. So, with friends who also loved the sea, started immersion in Portofino, using very basic instrument to reach their goal: go underwater.
Since then, he used his passion for the sea to create the base of what would be his life. They managed to get afterwar instrument from the Marina Militare underwater section. So the first masks, things that my father changed and adapted for what were his needs. So I can call him a pioneer. And with my sister and my brother, we followed him. Since today, where the company works internationally under all the certification, as in Iraq for the Mosul Dam. Since five years ago, we used to outsource the project of the job. Before we were only executors. Now we plan and project in advance with our own engineers, which is the best way to complete the job. The meeting with Mr. Nieko was kind of a thunderbolt, because uh, when two people combine their job and passion, there is obviously an immediate understanding. So when my father met Mr. Nieko during the heavens sink, started what was and still is a very good business relation that bring us to work again for the refloating of the Bacino Mediterraneo. The working time and time schedule were planned to grant efficiency and fast response without the overstress imposed by an emergency activity. Mr. Nieco presented us a project with all the details of the operation that actually went exactly as he projected. That in my life never happened before. I mean, starting a project and execute it without any changes never happened to me. With Mr. Nieko it happened. We had to follow the strict rules the judge applied. It means do not move any object present in the area. We had to plan and project everything out of the water until the judge permission. Thanks to the sonar, we managed to scan all the objects present in the area and therefore install the satellites that Nieko has designed. As soon as the installation was completed, the boat was stable in an unnatural position. The divers were equipped with online camera and microphone to get easily instruction from above. As soon as the position of the settler were correct, the divers started to weld them on the ground. This was possible only thanks to special equipment that the diver used in order to work in the dark water. The cappuccino problem happens when the water you work in is dark, due to, in this case, oils, chemicals, material, gasoline belong to the boat and the sea water of the port, that in Livorno is a mix of sweet and salty water, so the diver could not see his own hand. It was as the diver was inside the cappuccino. In this case, the diver has to work by memory. It means that you have to stop trying to see with your eyes, but start to use your memory as feeling as a blind man. For example, if you have to weld, you use the touch of your hand to understand where to do the job and if it's done well. The mobilization of the team of construction divers requires the shifting of Legor to a diving support trailer a fast RIB and a couple of assisting boats, a dedicated recovery system to retry divers in case of emergency, and a hyperbaric chamber, plus all the loose gear which was considered necessary. As that was a crime scene, we could not make any mistake, not even hit a thumb with a hammer, because everybody was expecting another accident, because that it was an unstable situation. 
we made a security plan testing the necessity to recover and bring from the deep an injured and unconscious diver to our hyperbar chamber or direct to a hospital. The best solution has been using the LARS, the launch recovery system. It's an elevator placed on the working side from where the divers get inside and outside the water. With this method, there is no diver's jump and the recover an unconscious diver result easier and safer. The LARS system allows you to not waste what could be vital seconds. The team was made by a superintendent, that is the one who decides how run the job of the day. In communication with the project engineer, under the superintendent there are two underwater supervisors who are in charge of four divers each. It means more than 10 people who work together at the same time. When the boat was secured, we started the refloating part of the project. Welding 10 pipes with a diameter of 100 cm, installing the 10 water pumps in them that allow us to dry and refloating the dock in complete security. It looks like a magic trick, but it's only the result of a perfect planning. And as I said, it happened to me once in a lifetime. At dawn on 15th September 2015, the pumps were started. The success was complete. After about 9 hours of controlled and sequenced bead ballasting, the floor of the dock was again above the sea surface. The project asked 6 months of designing and project, 2 months of preparation and the refloating was carried out as scheduled in about 9 hours on 15 September 2016. About 25 tons of stabilizing devices uh, were manufactured and put in position. Almost 200 meters of pipes having the diameter of 1 meter were inserted into the double bottoms. About 1000 man hours were spent diving. 16 deep well pumps having the aggregate capacity of almost 58 hundreds of cubic meters per hour were used. If you ask to these guys which figures are in their opinion better described in the project, they say 5 and 0. 5 days of delay on a schedule of 44, planned when the project was still to be finalized. Zero incidents.